Welcome to Commander Tunes for the Nitpicking Nerds. This video has us tuning up our patron Patrick's Kethis Super Friends deck. I'm your host, Joe Cherries. I'm your host, BZ, and that makes us the Nitpicking Nerds, bringing you daily Commander content like nobody else in the entire world. If you want to support us, you can go to Patreon. we got a link set up for you in the description. Click it, and then you can support the nerds in any variety of ways. Yes, and you can also use our affiliate links for tcgplayer.com, which means you can click the link in the description, takes you to the website, and guess what? Now, when you purchase those Magic cards, you are going to buy anyway, because who are you kidding? You're a Magic player, you buy a Magic cards. You're supporting the nerds, and we appreciate that very much. Yeah, same thing's true for Dragon Shield. Best sleeves in the multiverse. That's their unofficial slogan from us only. You can go to the link there. They got EU links and they got US links, both in our description. And we get a pretty uh, pretty nice little chunk of change there when you help uh, support the channel by buying sleeves. Yes, yeah. I mean, literally, you should you should sleeve all your decks in Dragon Shields. I would I would pers I literally do that and I would personally advise it so you know, that's lots of sleeves you got to go get off the website yeah what's uh what's commander tune-ups before we get in well it's a series where we take a patron your patron or a backer ki a Kickstarter backer submitted decks and under your restrictions and your budget we upgrade that deck now for this deck the restrictions were uh well, no budget to start. That, so that's not restricting us at all. We don't have a budget. We can put whatever we want in here, but we're not going to go too crazy. We always avoid the duels and mana the, crypts. Mana crypt, the things that you know you would put in every single deck if you had the budget. Uh, so he also wanted no infinite combos. So he doesn't want to go infinite. He doesn't want to just win with like a two card Revlar uh, Karma guy. Karma guy type thing. And he also wants to keep the Super Friends theme. Well, we can definitely do all those things for you, Patrick. <laughs> First thing we gotta do is read Kethis. He is white, black, green for an elf advisor. He's a 3-4. Legendary spells you cast cost one less to cast. Exile two legendary cards from your graveyard until end of turn. Each legendary card in your graveyard gains, quote, you may play this card from your graveyard, end quote. Perfect for a Super Friends deck. Our Planeswalkers cost one less to cast because they're all legendary. And then we can exile other legendary cards or other Planeswalkers to recast our best stuff from the graveyard. Yeah, it's pretty simple deck. This is a Super Friends deck. Cares about legends. Cares about the graveyard. Guess what? That's, it's as easy as that. Yeah, the main game plan, generate value from Planeswalkers and use other legendary cards for recursion. One of the cool things about Kethis decks is you get to put a ton of random legendary permanents in your deck that no other deck really cares about. Yes, uh, so the first thing we do with these Commander Champs is we tell you what the best cards of the deck already were. So this deck obviously came to us with certain cards in it. These are the ones that not only will we not remove them, but we would probably put them in first if we were making the deck. Oh, yeah. So the first one is Reki, History of Kamigawa. This one's hilarious. It's a card that is so medium in almost any deck. But when you all you care about is legends, guess what? It says cast a spell, draw a card. Yeah, whenever you play a legendary spell, they it was it's an old card worded the best way because there's legendary sorceries in this deck too. You still get the draw. Yeah, I mean, Reki's just going to be a card draw engine. We also have Peer, a Mazin of Rascal. This is a Planeswalker deck. Whenever we play our Planeswalker, they're onto an extra loyalty. And whenever we plus them, guess what? They're going to get an extra loyalty because Peer's worded in the best way possible. Very similar to Karth the Lion, who not only helps find Planeswalkers when he enters and when they die, but then they all their abilities cost one less uh loyalty to activate, they get about an extra plus one whenever they do anything. Yeah, I mean, if something already is a plus, like it's a plus one, make a one one. Yeah. Now it's a plus two, make a one one, which is just going to get you to those ultimates faster to win games. And even a minus six is now a minus five and your Planeswalker stays alive. Yeah, and then these last two, they're obvious. If you're playing a Planeswalker deck, they're obviously two of the best cards. It's Vorinclex, Monstrous Raider, and Doubling Season. All these are going to do is when a Planeswalker enters, it's going to enter with double counters, meaning you can ultimate all the good ones right away. Yep, and then we're just going to win the game because most Planeswalker ultimates just need a little bit of push, and you're going to demol demolish everyone. Now that we know the best cards in the deck, well, we have to do some adds and cuts. The first thing, Planeswalkers. I mean, it's a Planeswalker deck, so we got to obviously cut the really poopy ones, and we got to put in some cool ones. That's for really poopy? <laughs> what? For Raska Swarm's Essence? I... I don't know one thing this card does. I can tell you with 100% certainty, without knowing anything it does, that it is poop. It's, it makes death touchers, and then when they hit, they get bigger. But we have no incentive to do that, and it's not worth playing a bad, like a bad Planeswalker to protect our good Planeswalkers. We can just play all good Planeswalkers, and most of them are going to protect us anyway. So we're cutting Raska, we're cutting Obnixilus, the Hate Twisted, and also Kaya, Bane of the Dead, three Warless Spark Commanders. 
I just don't have any interest in like killing a creature to draw two. Uh, you'll see one. If you want to kill a creature of your own to draw two cards, Obnixilus is not the right one to use. Kaya Bane of the Dead is just really expensive removal spells. Yeah, these all these ones are just they're the minus only. Yeah, peep things, and they're just not. They're just not that good. Some of them are good. the ones that are good. Commander, there's like, you know, uh, Narset. Narset is maybe one of the only one of those that's playable. In Ashiok Teferi. Ashiok Teferi pluses though. Oh, you mean the minus only? The minus only ones, yeah. So like the uh, for the uncommons that only have minuses, it's really only those two that we listed. These other ones are just not going to make any of our decks. Yes. Also, Gideon Jura. I don't want to make people attack him, and he has no ultimate. I'm never going to make him a creature. And minus two, destroy one tap creature. I just don't think there's enough there to justify one of them. Because we can't play 30 Planeswalkers. We're playing, I think, 18 or yep. 19. So that's not going to cut it. you got to play the very best Planeswalkers you can get. And Gideon Jura is not one of the very best Planeswalkers you can get. Yeah. A Johnny Unyielding, he like pluses to draw cards and minuses to sorts to plowshares. But at six, you kind of just want some slam dunkers. And this is not a slam dunker. So now that we cut the poop out of the deck, we got to add some awesome Planeswalkers. First, we have Ren and Seven. This is going to get us a ton of lands. Make sure we hit all of our land jobs for the rest of eternity. And on top of that, it makes a good blocker, a really good blocker to protect our Planeswalkers. The emblem is hot fire. It's going to help us win the game. And it puts cards in our graveyard. We're going to be milling all of the legendary permanents or legendary cards we hit that aren't lands. Just go right to the graveyard. So, uh, so Kethis has some fuel. Synergy, 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 synergy. In synergy? That's like seven pieces of synergy. Ren and seven pieces of synergy. Boom! Oh, yeah. <laughs> Vraska, Golgari Queen. Now, this is the Vraska I'm more interested in because the plus one, you can sacrifice permits if you got extra tokens from other planeswalkers lying around, or she can just plus for plus's sake. The minus is not nothing. It's definitely useful. I can snipe a mana rock or a Rhystic study or whatever. And the, But uh, I think what's really cool about this one is the ultimate is like literally game winning. It says, if you hit them, they lose. Yeah. Also, a thing about Varaska is she also gives you this synergy of like, I have a planeswalker. I want to like reset. Yeah. I can minus it down to like one, and then plus sacrifice it, recast from my graveyard. Now it comes back with all of its loyalty. Now you can plus it. I mean, she just has all this little synergies like that. Any any legend on the battlefield, you can do that with. Yeah. And she's pretty cheap. She's only four man. Uh, Tevish Zot, Doom of Fools. Now, if you're gonna sacrifice something with Obnixilus and draw two cards, just use uh. Tevish, who can also sacrifice Planeswalkers and do the same thing Vraska can do, but just always draws you two cards. You don't have to worry about anything else. He has pluses. He makes disposable bodies to protect all your Planeswalkers with, and his ultimate is nuts. Yeah, making two zero ones is just going to let you protect your Planeswalkers pretty easily on one go around the table, and drawing cards, card advantages, card is just great. Yes, and also keep in mind, all these Planeswalkers cost one less because when we have cut this out, they're just cheaper. Uh, Johnny Steadfast, so he's going to be three mana. He just... Minuses, pretty much every time, I think the play pattern here is just minus, 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 minus forever. Uh, give all your creatures counters, that's fine, but all your planeswalkers get a loyalty counter, so the other, he's helping the other friends out. And his awful emblem is actually pretty decent too. Yeah, we can also talk about the next one, which is also a only one mode planeswalker. This is Liliana of the plus, 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 plus. Yes. Because you just want to be making players discard. One, we want to fuel our own graveyard to get stuff in there. And then on top of fueling our own graveyard, we just want people to have less cards in their hand. The minus is a failsafe. Yeah, sometimes it's going to be like, man, they only have, like, for the sake of argument, a Bladesteel Colossus. Get them. Get them. Get them. Get the Bladesteel Colossus out of there. And sometimes that's going to happen, but she she will plus 95% of the time, no doubt about that. Right. It's not even on cards because you're, you're down one and your opponents are down three. But if we care about having the card in the graveyard, we discard a legendary land that we don't need. It's positive for us and negative for everyone else. This It costs black, black, which is pretty sweet. So before we move on from the Planeswalkers, just to give you a better idea of the deck, I'm just going to run down real quick our full roster of walkers so you can see what we got cooking. So we have Grist, Three Mana Kaya, Lily of the Veil, vale, Johnny Steadfast, Johnny the Greathearted, Garrick Relentless, Garrick Wildspeaker, The Wanderer, Vraska, Golgari Queen, Freilis, Five Mana Kaya, Liliana, Death's Majesty, Nissa, Vital Force, Tavish Sot, Renan Seven, Garrick, Cursed Huntsman, Liliana, Drenhor General, and Ugin, the Spirit Dragon. So hopefully that roster rundown gave you a little better idea of what this deck's cooking with. Next, we have Self Mill. Now, this isn't a huge theme of the deck, but we did some cuts and we did some ads. The three we cut were Stinkweed Imp uh, and Golgari Grave Troll. These are both just dredgers. They both have keyword dredge. They don't really have any other wording. It doesn't matter. But dredge is just not really working with us. And these aren't legends. So we weren't really interested in them. We have no way to get them in the graveyard. I mean, we added Lily of the Veil. It wasn't already in the deck. So that's one way that we have to cheat these out. I mean, there was no self mill in the deck. There was no Lily. So there was really zero re ways to get this in the graveyard. We're not adding, like, infinite. And the things we're adding is just better than a random dredge creature that you're going to have to, like, play. 
and somehow sacrifice. Yeah, you want to be playing like your Entomb effects and, and stuff like that, Buried Alive. Those kind of cards really up the dredge creatures when you can put them directly into your graveyard from your deck, but this deck isn't doing that. No. Uh, we also cut Incarnation Technique. Uh, I think this card is really decent. Um, like a solid card. It mills over basically 10 and, and you reanimate two. And then somebody else does it uh, five and reanimates one. Now that is cool and strong. This is a low creature deck. This is just not what this deck wants to do. If you're playing a really, really self-mill intensive deck that loves reanimating, yeah, this card can be great. Yeah, we have some incidental self-mill because we want cards in our graveyard, but it's not, we don't have banger creatures. Our best creature is Vorinclex. That's not going to that offset the fact that we're giving away a free creature. We just want to, with Incarnation Technique, you want to slam, like, Razaketh and some other nonsense, like a Grey Merchant, and just mess them up. Yeah, you want you want to be doing something very, very powerful. Your reanimation targets need to be great. Uh, for the ads in this category, Seder Wayfinder, it mills over four. You get back a land from among them. Absolutely awesome. Stitcher Supplier, this mills over six. I mean, one mana mill over six, that's just, that's unmatched in Commander. It's unmatched in Magic, actually. Yeah, uh, <laughs> now, Perpetual Timepiece, one of the best cards ever. It not only mills every turn, so it's kind of like a dredge too, but you still get your draw step. Also, it can protect your graveyard from some graveyard haze, so if someone's going to fire something off, you go, nah, all right, shuffle in all my legends, leave all the crap to get exiled, and I don't want to draw it again, and now my deck just has a bunch of legends in it, which is better than I lose my graveyard without the hope of getting them again. And this last ad, I think, is hilarious. Uh, we were going to put in Undead Butler, a, a card that we've absolutely been hyping up. We think it's very good from the new set. But BZ says, what about if instead of old Undead Butler, we put a card that me and you hated on from the set uh, in Old Rutstein? Now, usually this, this card is much worse than Undead Butler. It's a piece of poop. I don't think it's very good. But it's a legend. It's just when you are playing a legend deck, if you can get mill from your legend, even if it is worse mill, it makes your deck that much more synergistic and stronger. Right. He costs the same as Undead Butler. They both cost two mana. Got to factor in Kethis. And you get one mill right away, which is two less than what you need, but you always get like a blood or an insect to protect your walkers or uh, a treasure token to help cast some things. So it's close, kind of close with Katniss out, but the fact that you can have Old Rutstein be milled by these other cards like Stitcher Supplier, uh, you know, throw him in front of a, a bus to protect one of your planeswalkers, and then use him as fuel to get them back is just going to be way more utility than Undead Butler. Exactly, yeah. This is a Legends deck. It's it's This reminds me of like when we talk about building your creature decks. Make sure your creature count is as high as possible. It's the same thing. This is Legends. Our Legend count needs to be as high as possible. And if we can take a slightly worse card in a situation, it's just it's always going to be better to have the Legend than the non-Legend in almost every case. Let's move on to the next category, which is Legendary stuff. Now, the final Legendary count of cards, spells, lands, everything Legendary in the deck 52. Over half of this deck has the word legendary on it, so Kethis is going to be one happy dude. Now we cut a couple legends. They're not all perfect just because it says legend doesn't mean we should automatically play it. Hope of Gearper. We're not like some spiky combo deck looking to silence somebody, and the fact that this can cost zero is cute, but it just doesn't do anything for us. Yeah, I'm, again, just not interested. This card is not a strong commander card at all. I don't think it should be in many decks. Uh, Shalai, Voice of the Plenty, sure. Gives, I get it. Gives our Planeswalkers Hexproof but then she has like a dead mode of putting counters on creatures. That's not useful for a deck. And a card that just says, if would I play a card that said my creatures, or not my creatures, my Planeswalkers get Hexproof? No, I wouldn't, so Shalai is out. I don't think giving your Planeswalkers Hexproof is, is going to do you any good. I think the cards that target Planeswalkers are pretty bad. There's not a lot of things that, you know, other than like a Chaos Warp, that's like Hero's Downfall is garbage. I'm never, no, never going to touch those cards, so I'm not going to insulate myself against cards I think are bad. Especially when Planeswalkers can just be attacked. That's the main way they die. So I don't think the Shalai is going to do anything good. Yeah, and then we also cut Shadow Spear, low creature deck again. Uh, they, if we don't have a lot of creatures, having a Shadow Spear is just not going to be useful. We definitely don't have a lot of creatures that want to attack. Yeah, that is definitely true. Uh, and the one that we do want to attack, Storav, uh, we cut that because it's bad. Yeah, I don't like Storav. It just says Planeswalker on it, but it's a trap. I, I think that card's just bad. We just don't want to play this four mana. When it gets in the red zone, it can return something. That went there this turn. Let's just cut this. We got cut this. But not during combat. I, this card's not good. This card's not good. How about the ads, though? Uh, for the ads, we added the Chain Veil. I mean, we're a Planeswalker deck. P Chain Veil literally says, activate your Planeswalkers twice by paying some mana. Wow. Well, that seems like a really easy include. And on top of that, oh, it's a legend? Okay, I'm <laughs> Thank in. Thank you for that, Wizard. Thanks for that extra little cherry on top. Eily, Eternal Pilgrim. It's one of our lower cost legends. It's going to help sacrifice things. We have Academy and... Arena Rectors, who are, will both get Planeswalkers and Enchantments, which is doubling season when they die. So we got just added a nice little way to sacrifice them and 
get some life bolster going on. I think it's okay. Definitely gets a big boost from being legendary. We're not going to play like a random sack outlet. Yeah, just exactly. Same thing with Yawgmoth, Thran Physician. This is like one of the best sack outlets in the whole format. Oh, it's nuts. But it's also a legend, and that's why it's in the deck. This card doesn't make the deck if it's not a legend, but lucky for us, it is a legend, so it really helps pull the deck together. Well, I don't know. This one might make it if it wasn't a legend because it says black, black, discard a card, proliferate. Yeah, that's Which fair. Is nuts. Yeah, maybe that's true. Does, regardless, doesn't matter. Yawgmoth's amazing in this list. Catilda, Dawnheart Prime, couple, got a couple of residual humans, and she by herself is just a nice mana dork with the super tech on uh, Shalai text. But that, we want the mana dork. It has a good floor of just tapping for mana, ramping into our stuff. Yeah, and I mean, also on top of that, she also makes all your other humans mana dark, so there is going to be some synergy. Sometimes Yawgmoth will tap for a mana. Which is great. We don't care about attacking. Yeah, not at all. Uh, and the last one we added, well, it's one of the best cards in the whole format, and guess what? It's legendary, so it's in the deck. Bolas is Citadel. This card is an absolute house. It's a value engine. You're gonna app, you're gonna love it. And it's a it's, it's literally a house. <laughs> it's a citadel. Yeah. This, you don't live in a citadel. Get out of here. You might. This card is super good, and obviously staple of the format. With the add-in that it's legendary, and all of a sudden you got an amazing character. Yeah, we could have just put this in. Even if it wasn't legendary, it's just one of the best cards. Yeah, exactly. Time for the miscellaneous category. It's ramp, removal, and the rest. Some of the cards, we're not going to make a category with one card in it, so it's this is all of them. We cut Arcane Signet, Felwar Stone, Orzhov Signet, and Talisman of Hierarchy. Hold on. Patrick, how long have you been watching this channel? How long? You're a huge fan, supposedly. We've hung out with him multiple times. We've hung out with you. NJ, you have mana rocks in your green deck? The audacity. Do we even... I don't even know you. Going behind our backs is just... I mean, that hurts. I mean, if you're going to claim to be a super fan and love the channel, then you, you should probably know that we would always tell you, cut mana rocks Get from your green decks. Come on now. Patrick continuously always claims to be a super fan. <laughs> won't shut up about it. Uh, <laughs> so instead, we'll talk about what we added. We'll, we'll, get, we'll get back to that. Uh, Rush Rebirth. I don't think this has a home in the deck. I don't think it has a home in many decks. Really not focused enough for it. Road of Return, this is just like a random card. I just cut it. Uh, I think the Road of Return is a card you put into a deck with a high cost commander that can't afford to get taxed over and over. Yeah, we only got, he's only three. It's yeah, not so bad. Exactly. So Road of, Road of Return, just not for this deck. And Casualty of War, okay spell, but we made the removal more efficient. Oh, yeah. So we added Sky Shroud Claim. That's the one you were missing. You had three visits to Nature's Lord, but you need Sky Shroud Claim, too, to go get those Bayous and uh, Savannas, which you have in the deck. We have OG Duels in here, so let's take advantage of them. Sakura Tribe Elder, also nice, dumb creature, gets in the way. Second for some ramps, like one of the best two mana ways to ramp. I noticed there were zero instants in this deck. So now there's three instants. We added, we need some hyper efficiency to offset the fact that we were playing clunky, bad cards like Planeswalkers. So we got Source of Plowshares, Nature's Claim, and Deadly Rock. They're going to keep us in the game for very low mana. Provide some crucial pinpoint removal when we need it. Yes. Uh, and now on to the very last thing that we got to do. You know, you sent us the deck. We're going to improve the land. So let's go to the lands category. For the cuts, I'm kind of going to run over these real quick. Malachi Rebirth, not very good because we don't have a lot of creatures. Hall of Heliad Generosity, I get it. Maybe you want to get back your doubling season, but it's still just not good enough. One Plains, one Swamp, two Forests. If you don't know what those do, then I can't help you. Uh, Commander's Beacon, just, I mean, this, a Commander is three mana. It's very cheap. We don't have to worry about that Commander tax too much. We cut Exotic Orchard, Isolated Chapel, Woodland Cemetery, and Sun Putter Grove. Not because they're bad or not because they don't belong in the deck, but because we want the Legendary count in our land slot to be as high as we can get it. Yeah, we have 52 Legends, and a big contributor to that is the lands where we can add some more. You can exile lands with Kathis' ability to cast your real spells. It's going to be sweet. So we added Nykthos, which is Legendary. Untadaki, the Cloud Keeper. Not only is it Legendary, it has a weird... It's like an ancient tomb for legendary spells, and that's like half our deck. So Phyrexian Tower, we have a bunch of little dudes like Sakura, uh, Seder Wayfinder and like Citrus Supplier. We're happy to sack those. You have in my Cradle of Growth, free roll. It gets going in any abs end deck anyway, and it's legendary. Pendlehaven, Forest with more words on it, it's legendary. Urborg, Tomb of Yawgmoth, automatic free roll, and it's legendary. Tomb of Arami, better than Swamp. Murmuring Bosk, Nice fixer. Helps with nature's uh, nature's lore effects where you need a forest because we cut some. City of Brass, three-color land. Temple Garden because you're missing Temple Garden. You had the other two shocks. And Bountiful Promenade because you're missing that. You had the other two Battlebond lands. Yes. So, obviously, the lands are just that much better. We have, like, seven legendaries there, as you can see. Uh, but we need to go to the little stats here to wrap up this video. Budget. Well, there was no budget. Patrick said, do what you want to this deck. Uh, we spent 300 
$40.11, and that is how you say that properly. There's a huge gap in between. Huge pause. The th- yeah, you have to do it correctly. Damn, we were good. Yes. I mean, if we had no budget and we only spent $300, come on. We were under budget. That's We're way under budget. Way under budget. The original average man value of this deck was 3.74. We brought it down a little bit. It's hard to bring it down with giant stuff like Primeval's Glorious Rebirth and Eerie Ultimatum in the deck. But we're at 3.66 now, so your spells are going to be a little bit easier to cast. Yep. And the total change for the deck, 30. So we changed, well, 30% of the deck. Patrick, this thing's going to run. It's going to run so smooth. And Patrick mentioned... If he's on gameplay, he'd like to bring this deck, and this seems like perfect for a Shuffle Scuffle episode in the future. Yeah, seems very, very awesome. Make sure you, you have to have Tomb of Arami or you can't play. If you can't sacrifice all your lands on a dime, what's the point? Yeah, I mean, I want to see that be the win con. Because yeah. there's, there's such a potential of, like, a game eventually gets to a point where it's so grinded out, and, like, both players are really low on life, mm-hmm. and the board's wiped. Mm-hmm. You just... Make this five five and go for it. No, no. When you it's <laughs> you're down to a one v one scenario. You have thirteen lands in play. They're at three life, and Kethis has three legends, two legendary permanents in the graveyard. One of which is Ugin. You have to sacrifice all your lands, float the rest to cast the Ugin and bolt them. <laughs> That's how you do it. No, I want to kill it with the five. five. <laughs> I want the five five to kill him. Oh my god! All right, that video's <laughs> over. Yep. Special shout outs to all of our patrons. Love you all as much as we can without making you uncomfortable, including you, Patrick Boswell, who is on this list here. Yes. Um, we have a link in the description if you want to join those Patreon ranks. There's also a TCG player rank link. No, there's no ranks there. It's link. <laughs> click it. Buy cards. I know you're going to do it. Buy them through the link so we get a kickback on the order for free from you. Extra cards, extra money for us with normal cards for you. If you want to buy the best sleeves in the multiverse, dragonshield.com, EU and US shops, head there, buy the best sleeves. Literally, the best sleeves you could ever get. And guess what? You're supporting the nerds now because you just because you bought the sleeves off the website? Are you kidding me? Wow. And as a tidbit about our lives, there was a heated debate in the last long form video about doors and doorways. And I have no idea. Who won that? Because it was really mixed. I read through a lot. There was like 550 comments on that video. And the reviews really mixed saying, doorway is part of a door. Doorway is not part of a door. You can't open and close a door. You open and close a room. So a bunch of different stuff there. I don't know which one of us has to eat something. But we were having another talk about clucking, like like that noise. And Joe was like, oh, I wonder if there's a biological use for it. And I was like, no. Well, I, don't, I don't think so. I think it's. Re- I was thinking related to language that's, that it was... Uh, evolutionary, always more beneficial to be able to cluck. I just think it's a natural byproduct of having a space and a movable tongue in the space. You can make noise. Maybe other animals can cluck, but they're never going to. I don't know. Yeah, but like babies cluck. Do they? Babies can have. I've seen babies cluck. They yeah, make, but it doesn't do it. It's not like I hear a baby clucking and I go, oh. Well, that's what I'm saying. But that, that's a baby who is incapable of complex thoughts. So they're not just doing it to be silly. But all they, all they, they're just ex- uh, experimenting and they like chew on toy cars like that's not evolution it's just them moving around and figuring out well, how che- objects interact well chewing on things is because of evolution it's for teething it's, 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 it's a teething and then the chewing is a byproduct of it I just think clucking is a byproduct of having a tongue and a mouth no I, I think that clucking potentially has some evolutionary advantage to being able I, to do it over not being able to do so it so let us know and the loser has to eat something on the channel I mean yeah it's the same thing it's just I mean there, every like almost every way you're built yeah there's some byproducts I think there's a lot of things that just are completely just complete happenstance that we have yeah but there's, there's, there's more stuff that's not well there's a lot of stuff that evolves if it doesn't prevent you from passing on your genes, you keep it. It just doesn't, like, if it doesn't kill you, then you just keep it. Yeah, that sometimes that's also true. But it's more often that... If, if humans evolved to wear tiny, like, we had little tiny hats on our head, we would just keep that. Well, yeah, but it also might be, it, it might be useful. You don't know about these. <laughs> but there's a hundred of those tiny hats. Well, the tiny hats might prevent you from getting sun in your eyes. <laughs> it would be a really weird sunburn. <laughs> well, uh, tell us what you think about the potential of humans evolving with tiny hats. Or the clucking. Peace out, Trap Scouts.